Before I explain number seven, I want you to look at these two different functions. Now, I could expand this out to five, six, seven, eight, nine. It would be really easy to come up with the y values, right? I just continue to add two. This is an example of linear. And if I graphed it again, it'd be a straight line. It'd be consistent. Your x's and your y's are consistently going up by two. The x's on the bottom are going up by one. Simple enough. What's different about the second function? The x's consistently go up by one, just like the first function. But down below in the y's, you're being multiplied by two. This is an example of an exponential function. It would not be as easy to consist to graph this. Um, so if I go to five, I'm multiplying this. Notice this is being multiplied by two, so this is up to 48, go up to six, up to 96. How do I put all of these data points on one graph when we have such a broad range of output values? So when we look here, we're looking at the census of residents every 10 years in a local city. And this is specifically from 1900 to 2010. And we want to choose which of the following graphs dis displays this data indicating the population is growing exponentially. Well, the first thing is, just like when I looked here, my x's remain consistent, no matter what type of graph I'm looking at. So it should be consistently going up by 10, like it states, every 10 years. When I look down below, I don't see the years, and this is not going up by 10. Here I see the years, and it's consistently going up by 10. Down here, it's not consistently going up by 10, like a consensus is giving. Here, it's not consistently going up by 10. That alone tells me the correct answer is A. But let's talk a little bit more about this. The other thing to recognize, like I shared here, is when we have exponential functions, the range of the output values is very large. And so if I graph this particular function on the y values, I could consistently go up by two. It would be really easy to plot. It's different here because it's exponential. It's being multiplied by two in this particular function. Here, as I can see, it's also exponential. It's exponentially growing. And that's why when we look at the y values, it's not consistently going up by two or three, right? It's going up by, it's being multiplied by 10. It's exponentially growing up. And that's because we have such a broad range of values that needs to model this original function. The correct answer is A.